Morning. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, what's called a hero's fountain before we work a few problems. So we'll be working problems for the combined gas law and that kind of stuff. But this uh, hero's fountain is kind of fun uh, and it makes use of a couple different properties, basically uh, pressure situations like Boyle's law kind of stuff, and then also potential energy, but it kind of pushes those two together. So it's kind of a nice way to, to do that. So what I've got is just a, a two liter bottle full of water. I'm going to leave that water colorless. Um, and then uh, you notice you've got, these are two glass tubes. So you've got a short one that comes out here and goes to this tube that's gonna go down lower. And then you've got a longer one that's gonna go down here to the bottom of the water. That longer one then comes up into the top part here, right? So this guy's gonna set here. And then this lower section uh, goes down here. And basically you've just got two tubes uh, going into this one, and this one's just going to go into an empty two-liter bottle that's just got air in it, and that's going to be down low, right? So uh, there's nothing, you have to prime it, right? There's nothing that happens here at the beginning, uh, but when we prime it, I'm going to put some in here, and we'll have uh, water start flowing a little bit, and after I get it started, I'll put some color in it so we can see what's going where. Ooh, ooh. What you now? Uh, Hero's Fountain. Hero's Fountain. Hero's Fountain. Yep. So uh, I'm going to put some green food coloring in here so we can see where our color is going. And then we can see this two liter down here is getting filled. And that is getting, as that's getting filled, whoa, bouncing the camera a lot. As it's getting filled, that's getting to be a little bit green. If I bring that up, the whole fountain kind of stops. All right, so we can see green up here. The green is not going into the Diet Coke 2 liter, but it is going into this bottom one down here, right? That water is starting to turn green. So what's taking place here is as uh, we put water in here, that water drains down here to this bottom one, right? Because of just gravity and potential energy kind of stuff. As that happens, it displaces the air that's in there, right? So uh, that um, decreases the volume that's there for the air side, so increases the pressure, that forces some air back up here. So as the air gets pushed in here, that raises the pressure, right? So pressure is up in here now. So now I've got too much pressure pushing down on this liquid. And so it's going in here. So it's basically the equivalent of kind of squeezing a two liter bottle or something like that, right? So uh, not the best camera for this stuff, but something like that, right? So it's called the Hero's Fountain, uh, invented clear back in like 1 AD or uh, 100 AD um, in Alexandria. Before we go on to the work and problems part, we should have already tried all the stuff in the week 30 packet, right? We should be able to work those problems. Um, these will be the last problems before we'll take a more traditional kind of quiz. It'll be on Moodle, but you'll get different numbers and, and that kind of stuff. So it won't just, you'll be able to need, you'll need to be able to work the problems, right? So that will be, uh, you know, like not a half test, but you know, maybe like a 30 or 40 point quiz. So, um, the daily quizzes are there to keep us doing the things and moving along and, and you can get there. Hopefully you figure out how that works and you can get the right answers on that kind of stuff. And we're getting nice five out of fives on those, but we've got to make sure we're figuring out how these problems work. So, um, if you haven't worked those problems, go ahead and pause it and work those problems, uh, first. And then I will work the ones that are in bold. I think some of them were in bold here uh before we move on so combined gas law we're basically taking the Boyle's law stuff and the charles law stuff and and smushing it together right so uh the combined gas law is p1 v1 over t1 equals p2 v2 over t2 right so uh it's all three of those things changing in Boyle's law we have to hold temperature constant well if you hold temperature constant it's the same in both spots and if I divide both sides by two, it doesn't really change anything, right? So uh, I can ignore that temperature, right? And that turns into Boyle's law. In uh, Charles' law, you have to hold pressure constant, right? Well, if I hold pressure constant, now the pressure drops out of there, and it's basically V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. In Gay-Lussac's law, same kind of thing. You've got to hold volume constant, so you go back to Gay-Lussac's law. So this is when you have all three of those things changing. So idea-wise... Two, three, and four on that combined gas law worksheet. Number two says, if the temperature increases and the pressure decreases, what will the volume do? So the temperature increases, that means the molecules are gonna move faster, right? So temperature increases and the pressure decreases, 
What's the volume going to do? Well, if the temperature goes up, they're moving faster. Pressure decrease or squeezing on it less, so it's going to definitely grow, right? Uh, number three, the volume will increase, right? The volume's going to grow. Uh, if the pressure increases, so they're moving faster, and the pressure increases, the volume will, well, that's harder to say. It depends on which one's bigger, right? The temperature increase, so they're moving faster, trying to expand, but the pressure increase, we're squeezing on it more, so it's whichever one of those is larger will determine that. So that would be undecided. That would be, it depends kind of thing, right? Which one's a bigger change. Number four, if the pressure, if the temperature decreases, so now they're moving slower and the pressure increases or squeezing on it more, what will the volume do? So uh, that volume is definitely going to shrink because my temperature decreased, so they're moving less and my pressure increased, so we're squeezing on it more. Uh, so that's going to cause the volume to shrink. Right. Uh, let's go ahead and work number five together. A lot of them have an, a lot of the questions have an answer there. You've just got to do the work to, to figure out how they're getting that. So number five, though, uh, we've got worked out, um, but there are a couple issues. Right. When I look at that, I see. Oh, no, there aren't a couple issues on five. Uh, unit wise, we're OK on five. The nice thing about making the list is you can check units on stuff. So I'm gonna, I'll just go ahead and work five normal. So that's P1 over V1, or P1, V1 equals P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. So my initial pressure is 350 millimeters of mercury. My initial volume is 35.0 meters cubed. My temperature is 300 Kelvin. My new uh, pressure is what I'm looking for. My new volume is 123 meters cubed. So it's grown. My volume went up and my temperature went up to 450 Kelvin. So we're saying what pressure will make this work, right? So we're going to cross multiply and divide, right? I want to get P2 by itself. So I'm going to multiply these two sides together. So that's going to be uh, 350 times 35 times 450 is going to give us 5512500, zero, zero, whole bunch of digits there. Units are really weird. Millimeters of mercury, meters cubed, Kelvin, which seems really weird, but that's what the units are. Uh, we'll go ahead and shift over this way a little bit. Uh, they'll cancel out to get what we need. In the other direction, I'll try and do that in another color so we can tell what's what, is going to be 300 times 123. And that's going to be P2 times 36,900, mil, uh, not millimeters of mercury, meters cubed, and Kelvin. So we cross multiply. Then the P2 is attached to this number over here. So we're going to divide both sides by this 36,900. Whoops, there's an extra three in there. I apologize, that's 36,900. So we divide both sides by 36,900 meters cubed and Kelvin. So my Kelvin cancel out and my meters cubed cancel out. Now, if your math is good enough, you can just do all this at once or whatever, that's just fine, uh, right? We do need to write it out like this, right? Do the, the write out there, but um, after that, a lot of students skip writing down some of the steps that I'm doing here. And that's gonna give us a new pressure a P2 of 149 uh, millimeters of mercury, because that's what's left. So my pressure went down, right? So my temperature went up, made it move faster, but only by a little bit, and our volume got a lot bigger, so that means our pressure must have dropped quite a bit to make that work. So our pressure is 149 millimeters of mercury. So we have less pressure now than we did before. All right, let's see if there's another problem in here we want to do. Why don't we do number nine? That way we have one where the answer isn't sitting there for the quiz. So the people who are actually watching the videos can get easy answers on the quiz. And people who aren't watching the video uh, will be in worse shape. So we're looking at nine. Nine says if I have 21 liters of gas. 21 liters of gas that is held at a pressure of 75 atmospheres. Let's say 75 or 78. 78 atmospheres. I can't read. 78 atmospheres and the temperature is 900 Kelvin. That's pretty warm. Uh, what will be the new volume if I decrease the pressure to 45 atmospheres? 
the uh, volume is what we're looking for, and the temperature drops to 750. All right, so if we make our list, and that gives us a chance to check units, is everything going to cancel? Right, atmospheres, atmospheres, liters, my answer is going to be in liters, Kelvin, Kelvin, right? So everything's going to cancel nicely uh, as we do that. So uh, P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Then I just plug in 78 atmospheres times 21 liters divided by 900 Kelvin. It's going to equal 45 atmospheres times V2 over 750 Kelvin, right? Then I just cross multiply and divide. I'm gonna skip writing out some of the steps this time, but I'm gonna multiply these three, right? Multiply, multiply, multiply. And then I divide by the two that are attached to the V2. So I multiply, 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 divide by, divide by, right? So uh, if you haven't already done this, pause it real quick and just make sure you know how to touch your calculator, right? So we multiply those three, divide by those two, that should give us 30 liters. I should put a decimal point there. I don't know how well you can see that. There is a decimal point there. I know there's some glare on the window or on the, the thing there. So, but we've got two sig figs across all these, right? Uh, 900 Kelvin have two sig Oh, I was pretty sloppy when I wrote that. Really, that's only one sig fig, so we should get rid of the decimal point there. But that's uh, that's just sloppy on my part. I shouldn't only give you one sig fig. Um, we should have at least two on those. Everybody else has two uh, sig figs, but, but we were sloppy on the 900. So hopefully that helps. Uh, if we are not feeling confident with working these problems, we should um, be logging into the Google Meet and working some extra problems with uh, with your teacher there.